jackass.
Who gives this woman to be the bride of this man? We do. <laughs> Thank you. 
there um, was a desire on Judah and Karina's um, uh, heart uh, for us to share simply a small tradition. Yeah, please sit down. That Lalita and I uh, began to express to our children um, when they were teenagers that um, after the principle of Solomon, one of the wisest men that ever lived and respected by so many faiths that um, he would uh, uh, say to his son and of course his daughters, daughter, will you give me your heart? And so um, the, <clears throat> the children were given an opportunity to, uh, as we explain what that meant, that it meant that we don't give our hearts and our uh, specifically our emotional and our spiritual lives to anybody else um, uh, until we share that uh, decision together with uh, uh, some adult. And in this case, we asked him if we as parents could be some of those adults that would be involved in that. And so Karina, uh, to symbolize that, did give me this key, um, which may not be noticed by some of you way back, but um, I'm holding it in my hand. And for years we've held it, Lalita and I, right up above our, our uh, bed, where it symbolized that our, this daughter specifically was going to not give her heart away until uh, we were all in agreement. And so uh, uh, Judah got exposed to that kind of a principle too. And uh, he waited a few years until that process played out. And today, today, I wanna in a very simple and profound uh, uh, way say that the deep work has been done in the hearts of the parents and in the hearts of Karina and Judah. And today I, I wanna give the key to the heart of my youngest daughter, to Judah. Let's begin this wedding service with a word of prayer. Our Father and God, oh, thank you for this beautiful day and to be in this beautiful place out in nature. The very first wedding, it took place out in nature and you were there and your son Jesus Christ was there and the Holy Spirit was there and all your angels and we welcome them to be here with us now. We just pray for a wonderful miracle to take place in the life of Judah and Karina. We pray your blessing upon them. May you unite their hearts and lives together. Lord, we pray that you will just bless them and, and bless this entire service. May all that we say, all that we do, bring your name, glory and honor and praise for you are the giver of marriage. Amen. And you didn't bring these two together by chance. In your will, in your foreknowledge, that you worked it out so that we can all be here today. And so I pray your blessing, not only upon them, but upon each person who is here, that you will bless our own marriages and those who will one day be married. Lord, send your Holy Spirit and Bless us now when we ask all these things in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Today, in God's word, I like for us to think about uh, a question that came to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 19, we see that Jesus is asked a question about marriage. And Jesus begins to talk about marriage. And here in 
Matthew chapter 19, beginning with verse 4, And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning? So he goes back to the book of Genesis. He goes back to the very first wedding. All right. He who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said. And so God spoke. Now, it's interesting because in the book of Genesis, we see that Adam spoke. And what we see is God is going to say the vows and Adam is going to repeat them afterwards. And I believe Eve took vows. And that's what we're here today to do. We're following the example of God's word, of the very first marriage that took place in the garden of Eden. God had said to that it was not good for man to be alone and that he would find a suitable helper, a helpmeet for him. And Judah and Karina, God has blessed you and brought you to this point. This is a, a moment of, of destiny in your own lives. God didn't bring you here by chance. In the very first miracle that Jesus performs, he does it at a wedding at Cana. Here was a young couple that God was getting married. And the good news is Jesus was there because the wedding would have been a disaster without Jesus being there. And the good news today is Jesus is here. He's with you. And without Jesus in your life, weddings would have no meaning no purpose and so today i'm going to encourage you to keep jesus at the center of your life amen you know i i heard an interesting amen. story well it's a, it's a true story I, I just heard that bill and melinda gates are going to get divorced now if you've been following this story if you know bill gates he's one of the richest men in the world yeah, riches don't make a marriage last. What makes a marriage last? It's a being surrendered to Jesus Christ, asking him in our hearts, helping us day by day through the good times, through the bad times, whether we're rich or poor, hey, hey, whether we're healthy or whether we're sick, hey, God is always there to help us. He can turn around all our circumstances, regardless of the circumstances, we can experience his presence, his help, his blessing, his peace, his strength, so that your marriage can last and last for all eternity. You know, it's interesting that a number of years ago, when uh, Judah and Karina met, all right, they met at a, a young adults meeting and they played a game called compatibility. And Judah and Karina were on the same team. All right, and believe it or not, they won the game. All right, now Judah thought, hey, that's a good thing. All right, and he said, hey, this, this is a sign. But now Karina, uh, Karina just realized this is just a game. All right, and God had plans for her life. All right. And after some time, after she spent some time in Thailand as a missionary, after she came back, all right, with her parents' approval, all right, uh, with God working in her own life and God working, she could see God's working in Judah's life. And then her heart was awakened to what God had planned for them today. All right, so I'm grateful that these two were brought together by God. Now, a marriage doesn't just happen by chance. You know, we are counseled in God's word. The apostle Paul writes this, especially to the husbands. He says this twice, Judah. He says, husbands, love your wives. All right. And you know, I took a look at how the Bible defines love. You know, it defines it, it says love is patient, Love is kind, love does not envy, love is not proud, love is not rude, love is not self-seeking, 
Love is not easily angered. Love keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil. Love rejoices with the truth. Love always protects. Love always trusts. Love always hopes. Love always perseveres. Love never fails. Amen. This is the kind of love that you should have for Karina. But, you know, I found in our own lives, we don't have that kind of love. That is God's kind of love. And the only way that we can experience this love is by sitting at the feet of Jesus and allowing him to fill you with this kind of love and allow that love to overflow from your heart, all right, to Karina's heart, okay? Now, God also says something to the wives here. He says, wives, submit to your own husbands. Now, he says that twice in the same chapter. I find that interesting. He tells the husbands to love their wives two times. He tells the wives to submit. And, and this kind of submission isn't that you become a doormat. If you remember back at the time of creation, yeah, and, and God created the woman. The, the woman was made from the side, from the rib of man, all right? Not from the top of the head because she was not to rule over man, and, and not from the foot because man was not to trample upon her, but from the rib covering his heart. Yeah, and that they were to love each other deeply and fully. And, and when Karina sees you submitting to God, being loved by God, and, and allowing that love to overflow, all right, she's going to feel safe. She's going to feel blessed. And she will want to be the woman that God has called her to be. And so both of you need to sit at the feet of Jesus. Jesus is the one who can help you today and every day. He can help you to be the man, the woman that you want to be. If you want a marriage that lasts, sit at the feet of Jesus. Jesus tells a story. It's about a wedding garment. There's a wedding that takes place. And, and, the, and the person who's having the wedding, he provides the wedding garments. This represents Christ's character, his robe of righteousness. It's a robe that all who believe in Jesus Christ will receive. Now, there was a person who thought he was okay by himself, and, and, and he, he brought his own robe, and, of course, he was removed. Okay? He was sadly disappointed. Now, we need the righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of Christ covers us from all our sins, but it also empowers us to live a righteous life. And you need to be clothed in the righteousness of Jesus each and every day to empower you to be the husband you want to be, to empower you to be the wife you want to be. All right? And... And then there's also this, the parable of the ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish, five had the Holy Spirit. You see, they knew what it meant to surrender to God, to submit to God. They asked for the Holy Spirit. And so today, I'm challenging you to submit your life to Jesus Christ. Ask for that Holy Spirit. Be clothed in his righteousness. Let him fill your hearts with love and grace and mercy so that you can live that way today and every day of your life. Now at this time, all right, Judah and Karina are going to do something very special, all right? They're going to wash one another's feet. Now, this is a symbol. Uh, it's a symbol of their love for one another. When Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, it Bible says he did this to show the full extent of his love. You see, you see Jesus should have had them wash his feet, but he didn't. He took time to wash their feet. It's a symbol of love. It's a symbol of being a servant. It's a symbol of being humble. And it's a symbol that they want to bring out the best in each other. And so at this time, they're going to wash one another's feet.
this time, they're going to give their keys to each other's heart. They're going to put it on a mantle over there, which shows that they're giving their hearts completely to God and to one another. All right, and we're going to do that right after the vows. So at this time, they're going to have, all right, the reading of the vows, Judah. Karina, Haile Brinkhouse, my love. As you know, I've been looking forward to this day since I was a child. Mm -hmm. I can remember knowing very early on in life that I wanted to get married, to be a husband and to love my wife fully. Along the way, from childhood to adulthood, I found Jesus and I have surrendered my life to him. And as my love for Jesus has progressed, I've realized the great significance of being a husband. I realized that I could achieve true love, lasting love, unconditional love for another human being, but only if and after I have completely surrendered my life to Jesus. It is by committing my life to him that I have become qualified to commit my life to you. It is by loving him first that I can truly love you. In God's word, <clears throat> the Bible, men are commissioned to love their wives as Christ loved the church. We are all the church, but most importantly, you are the church. So my vow to you is to follow Christ's example. As Christ did his best, I will do my best to put you first. To share your burdens, to be beside you no matter where you go. You see, I now view loving you in marriage as the greatest God-given mission of my life. I promise to protect you, to care for you, to prioritize your needs, to nurture you when you are sick, to comfort you when you are grieving, to be willing to face any challenge, any threat, and any fear that we encounter. 
For you, I am willing to surrender my pride and be willing to change. And though today I assume the role as head of the household, I will co-lead. Our future with you, my helpmate, and God, our Lord. I wish to reason together on difficult issues, to walk side by side with you, not to go in front of you, not to fall behind. I wish to hold your hand the entire way. I will hold your hand when we are experiencing moments of falling deeper in love, like this one right now. I will also hold your hand when I don't want to, when my own selfishness tries to tear me away. I will hold your hand through the good and the bad, knowing that you are my biggest blessing. You are so beautiful. Your laugh captures me and I adore you so, so much. I know that it is human nature to change over time and that one day you may be a completely different person. I vow to love that person too. A book we've been reading together says, of all the relationships I have, I will value ours the most. Of all the people for whom I'm willing to sacrifice, I will sacrifice the most for you. With all your failures, sins, mistakes, faults, past and present, I still choose the God-honoring way to a better marriage and a better life. I choose to honor you. Thank you for choosing me too. Who would have ever thought that I, the one who shrank from the idea of marriage, would be standing before you today? I used to try to explain my feelings away from you and actually fought falling in love with you. I put up a formidable mountain for you to summit in order for you to reach my heart. And yet despite this, you have proven that you are persevering towards your goal, patient with the waiting, and so abundantly forgiving of my shortcomings along the way. You demonstrate selflessness to me in so many ways, willingly submit your pride when necessary, and are so extravagant in your love. I would have to be blind to not see the ways you have reflected and characterized the very heart of God as you have pursued and fought for me. As I was leaving, leaving for Thailand in 2017, you sent me off at the airport with the promise, I'll be here when you get back. Little did I know how difficult a promise to keep that would turn out to be. No. No. Yet, as you laid no. on what could have been your deathbed, you fought to keep your promise to me. And you did. I can't imagine anyone but you standing before me today. Promises are tricky things for mere, mere humans to keep but the strength of your love challenges me to deeper commitment. And so, Judah Bear, my chico, I 
Commit to receiving all the overflowing warmth and love you wish to bestow on me. I commit to support you in the vision God gives you and stand by your side as we take on the world together. I commit to massaging your shoulders at the end of a long week of nursing exams. I commit through God's grace to greet you always with a smile and remind you every day how blessed I am to be your wife. I commit to loving sweetie and caring for her. I commit to always assuming the best of you and avoid jumping to premature judgments. I vow to be the nurse of your dreams when you're sick and need someone to nurse you back to health. I commit to always strive to be transparent with you. I vow to always treasure the sigh of contentment we both make when we hug after a long day. I am not perfect, but I serve a perfect God. And through his strength, I stand by the vows I make to you today. Thank you for refining my character for heaven and helping me understand God's love to deeper levels. I look forward to growing together as individuals, but also into an eternal, indivisible oneness. You are my place of rest of, and comfort, my constant and my arms of protection. I love you like I love taking a deep breath. And I want to spend the rest of our lives practicing to love you selflessly and unconditionally until we are one day finally home in the sky and united with the source of all true love, the owl. Just a little something I wanted to say about this before we do it is that um, this to, to us symbolizes the heart of God and the love of God and we are going to latch our hearts onto the love of God and there's a nail right here and then we're going to rest the tips on the cross of Christ and his grace. Judah and Karina, since you have made before God and these witnesses mutual pledges of affections and vows of fidelity, I, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and by the authority of the laws of the state of California, do pronounce that you are husband and wife, what God has joined together let no one put asunder. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, oh, Father, thank you for being here with us. Amen. And being part of this ceremony. And just as you were with Adam and Eve, you're here with Judah and Karina, and you just want to bless them. Bless them now and every day of their lives together. I pray that you will give them peace and joy and happiness, that you will cause them to prosper and keep them in good health. And if rough times do come, and they will come, 
that they will be just as they are right now and holding hands together, rejoicing in you and thanking you for bringing each other together. And Lord, keep them until the days when you will come in the clouds of glory. Bless their marriage. And may all who see them know that here is a home that loves you and that is blessed by you. Oh, thank you, Lord, for being here with us now and for hearing and answering our prayer because we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Judah, you may receive your bride. Well, it is my privilege to introduce to you, all right, Mr. and Mrs. Judah and Karina O'Shaughnessy. No. to tell you what's going to happen right now um you need to stand up and i need you to turn around and on the hill is the photographer he wants to take a, a picture of all of us 